time series models are often used in data science where there's some type of temporal or sequential nature to the data where we want to try to predict what's going to happen next based on the data that came before. And a common time series model is, um, is like this where we have coefficients A and B. And let me just write this out in a little bit more detail just to make this a little clearer. So let's say we just had um, something like a table of values and I had 0, 1, 2, 3 and then a y value. All right, and let's say the y value started at 1. Now we want to try to predict what is the next y value here. We might use our prior y value as well as um, something else like uh, input u. So let's say this is a heater value, for example, and then at a certain point it turns on to 100%. So y value, maybe this is our current ambient temperature. I'll just change that to 20 degrees Celsius. We'd say there's no heater value. We're going to predict that this is going to go to 20. All right, but then when it turns on to 100, maybe that's going to go to 21, 22, 24, 27, and so on. Okay, so this would be considered time series data where we have some kind of a temporal element to it. And you can see even though the heater is on at 100%, it takes a little while for the temperature to rise. And so a time series model might be the temperature at the next time point, that's going to be k plus 1, equals a, and then I'll just say a0 times the temperature at the prior time point, so the one that's right before it. And maybe you want to go one step further, and you want to go tk minus 1. You want to look at the temperature even before that. Or maybe you want to look at the uh, heater value. I'll just say that's our U value um, from one time step before and maybe another time step before as well. Okay, so we'd be looking two steps back for the temperature and then also for the heater to help us predict the next temperature in this. So this would be like our temperature and that's our heater, and this is our time. Okay, so this would be a time series model. It's just written uh, in the way that you see it there on the left in a summation. Uh, we're just taking coefficients and then multiplying it by the y value here, and another coefficient by another y value. You can continue on uh, you, how many data points or predictions you want to use in the past to predict the next thing. Okay, so um, many different forms of these. These are linear models, uh, fortunately, so they're fairly easy to uh, regress and to work with. Okay, so here we have, or we want to calculate a response um, to this time series, and we have some coefficients here, and we just want to be able to plug in plug in these values because if I run this I'm just going to get essentially the wrong answer okay just kind of a flat line and so what we want to do is use the last y value and multiply that by uh, the first a coefficient okay plus y of k minus 1 I'm just going to go one back on the index times a um, 1 plus y k minus 2 times a2. Okay, so those are uh, some of the first ones we got. You can sometimes line these up. Makes it just a little easier to read. Okay, or maybe not. Okay, but I can just put continue each one and see. Um, okay, that's just a little bit better. All right, and then let me just keep going. I'm going to add in, I'm going to get rid of this comment right here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just add in the next one, which is going to be our B value. Okay, so I have the U, and that's going to be K 
times uh, times B zero. All right, so here is my time series, and let's see how this does now. Okay, so it's predicting that there's going to be a rise in the value, but it's going to take a little while for it to get um, up. So this is like a temperature uh, response based on a heater going to 100%. This might be the temperature, for example, in degrees Celsius. All right, so the rest of this um, is just really running examples and uh, trying some different parameters. One of the time series model uh, generators is this system identification package in Gecko. And there's some help that you can get by just doing uh, help m.sysid once you import a model and create it a Gecko model m. Okay, I'll let you read through some of this. Basically, the things that you're going to need to adjust most often are these number of coefficients. How many time steps back are you looking? Um, and you can also adjust some of these like uh, shift, uh, none, init, mean, and calc. And that's how you shift up or down to eliminate uh, a steady state bias. Okay, you also have pred, which is model or mes. MES is going to be much faster. That's autoregressive exogenous input regression form. And it's a very fast solution. A model uses an optimizer, uh, an implicit solution. And so it's slower, but uh, sometimes the results are a little bit better. All right, and it's going to return the prediction. P is coefficients. And then we'll also have the gain matrix as well. All right, so let's go ahead and change. We can change some of the input and output coefficients. I'm just going to run this. Um, it's going to import some data, and then it's going to show the fit of this time series model. So this sysid, it adjusted the parameters uh, that we saw, the A and B parameters. And it did that to minimize the sum of squared error or some other factor that we had for a loss function and come up with this uh, response right here that predicts the true temperature. Now we can change some of these. Like let's say we want to go up to a third order. Okay, or we could go up to a fifth order and you could change those independently. And you can see that it gets just a little bit better in terms of the fit. All right, so let's go down here and we're going to simulate a time series where you might have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. So for example, this could be temperature one and temperature two. And then we are trying to predict that based on the prior temperature one and the prior temperature two values and also the heater one and the heater two values. Okay, so um, Let's just, uh, you can input these. There's a model that's already trained. Here's your A and B and C matrices uh, that are basically these coefficients just packaged into matrix form. And the C, we haven't discussed that. That's an extra output uh, right here at the very end, plus C1, for example, and plus C2. Uh, Okay, so those are just going to be constants at the very end. And those are sometimes just zero. In this case, it's just going to be zero. All right, and then I'm going to uh, solve this. And we're going to do some um, just some step tests. So this shows the step response model where I'm going to step up these inputs, these manipulated variables. And I want to see the response here in the controlled variables, the things that I'm trying to drive to a set point or want to see the response of. So the, the main thing that you want to pay attention to here is when you're creating this, you can create an ARX model. And you can define your coefficients uh, yourself. Or you can let an optimizer come up uh, with those for you. So the sysid comes up with the parameters p. Or you can insert those yourself in this uh, matrix form. OK, so let's um, go down to the TC Lab activity. This one is going to collect data 
for a period of time. It's going to be TC Lab uh, 12, uh, 12 TC Lab, and um, it's going to go for 10 minutes. Um, now, this one is going to take just a little while to collect, so I'll let you do that on your own. I have a video here that shows uh, what it should look like when you run it. Okay, so it's going to use this time series model and it's going to, um, I'll just go to full screen here, and it's going to uh, try to drive it to different target values by adjusting the heater values automatically. So this is what's called model predictive control and these time series models are used very frequently in chemical plants and refineries or other types of model predictive control applications. Uh, they started there maybe in the, in the chemicals industry but have since gone uh, so many different areas, robotics, uh, you know, aircraft, um, you have uh, MPC in automobiles, in uh, you know, many other things in healthcare. Uh, so a lot of different model predictive control applications and so this will help you identify a model and then run it with a model predictive controller. Uh, you can see its target range that it's going to. The black lines are the target range. And um, you can see those are changing uh, every so often as it tries to track down the measured values down to that uh, target range. Okay, so that's it for time series. Um, this one will take a little bit longer to run, so I just encourage you to run it. And um, you can do things to change some of the values, um, you know, it, but mostly it's just to observe how it's done and try to learn by this example.